sky's the limit. Billing sky's the limit. Short and the Kansas City Chiefs have won Super Bowl 57. What episode would this be? Episode what? 18? 19? No, episode 19. Welcome back to episode 19 of Kansas City Chiefs franchise. Honestly, I mentioned this briefly at the end of, I believe, episode 18, which was the last AFC Championship game, but I thought about doing something specific for this season, but I'm really not too sure if I'll even be capable of doing that. Because the thing that I had in mind was to make year three for Chiefs basically a full season episode, essentially. So if you've watched like any of the YouTubers that do like Express Leagues or anything like that, they basically take the entirety of the season and they jam it all into one singular episode or one singular video. So the idea that I had was doing that for the entirety of year three when it comes to Chiefs franchise. So there's a chance that I do it because in recording this episode, what? In recording this episode 15, not not even 15, episode 14 is not even out yet. So depending on how much actual season I get completed by time actual episode 18 is out, depends on whether or not this becomes full franchise for year three or not. But if it doesn't end up becoming full franchise and y'all see an episode 19 that has absolutely nothing to do with, you know, this whole full franchise thing. And it's like a regular episode similar to our last offseason episode or even episode one of Chiefs franchise. Then, yeah, you just know that we didn't have enough time. So I don't really have too much to address in the resign period. As far as upgrade players, I highly doubt anything of significance is here. Like, if we just scroll through them quick, yeah, there's nobody here, so this necessarily doesn't matter. The only thing I wanted to really hop on here and really discuss for a second is re-signing players. Now, there was a lot of of confusion in me as to whether or not I wanted to re-sign Nick Boyd, considering how good Leo Chanel has been for me. But I'm not going to lie to you. I think after Nick Bolton made that play in the playoffs that I feel like it's almost it would almost be wrong to not resign. It would essentially be wrong to not resign. So we're going to give Nick Bolton a player friendly deal because why the hell not? In all honesty, welcome back to the team, Nick Bolton. As far as free agency, though, I don't think we're going to be a big player this year. I think we're probably looking more to the trade market. In all honesty, we want to accept. George Karloff is his fifth year option, and we're going to also accept Cole Strange's fifth year option. Grover Stewart, as I mentioned, was a one year rental. Sam Darnold, all of these guys on the back end, they could honestly go. I think I'm going to re sign Buck. Buck, do you come back on this? Oh, Harrison Buckner is not, in, is not interested in signing. I mean, I don't think I waste a franchise tag on Harrison, realistically. I don't think I waste the franchise tag on here. I want part of me wants to try to bring back Justin Reed, but then another part of me says, is there really a plan bringing back a guy that can't develop anymore? So I think, unfortunately, in the case of Justin Reed, 92 speed, 92 excel, I think we move on from Justin Reed because his bar is gigantic at this point, and he is now an 84 overall. I don't think we keep I don't think we keep Justin Reed I honestly don't and as far as Creed Humphrey I want to re-sign him but if not even if when we re-sign Creed Humphrey it's gonna absolutely kill my money I'm gonna send this just to see if he accepts it because at the end of the day a good O-line is beneficial for DJ a uh, good O-line is beneficial for DJ but with that signing I don't think we can bring back Justin Reed like I could for tag him 
I really could, but I think, dear, we might just have to eat everybody that comes. Like, oh, I don't even have the salary to do it. I don't even have the salary to do it. Okay, well, I guess Justin Reed is gone. All right, everybody here is going to have to be gone. Justin Reed, Grover Stewart, Sam Darnold, Malik Herring, Chris Stockton, Harrison Bucker, and Ryan Winslow. I appreciate all y'all services, but as of right now, with re-signing some of our main guys, basically, we don't have the money to be able to bring y'all back. And I told myself at the beginning of the season that when it came to Trey Smith and Creed Humphrey, I was going to bring back one. And if I made it a situation where I didn't bring back either, that wouldn't really make no sense at all. As far as developments and how badly some people were hurt by regression, I know that they have two separate things of development. So at the end of episode 18, y'all saw certain people dev up, certain people dev down. As far as now, I don't know if it's the same anymore because things change. The one thing I'm praying that's still the same. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank goodness. The one thing I was praying stayed the same was that... Hold on, I'm confused. Okay, Noah's right here. I'm sitting here like, where's Noah not? But the one thing I was praying stayed the same was that Demarcus Jackson kept his superstar ability. And thank you, DJ kept his superstar ability. I have short out on him and I have reached for it on him. DJ next year is currently an 83 overall. Next season, DJ is probably going to be like a, a true 88. A true 88, a 90 style running back. Because he's literally he literally has a 6K bar. DJ is set up for greatness as the running back for the Kansas City Chiefs. Chase Claypool, he got two star dev, albeit his bar got larger. But I believe at the age of 27 is the final season for breakout games mid year. So I believe if I get him the ball enough throughout the season, he has potential to go up to superstar. He has had great seasons for us, two great seasons with 15 and 14 touchdowns, respectfully. Next year, I believe I'm going to make it a priority almost to try and get this man Chase Claypool the ball to the point where he could actually become, you know, a realistic number one, as in having superstar abilities and all that. As far as Juju, now that Juju is 28, I think I might cut him because Juju was a great rental as far as last year was concerned. But as far as receivers, I think now is a good enough time to bring Rashi back into the box or back into the mix because Rashi had a great year one for me and year two, he ultimately got benched for the whole Juju situation. But I think, I think now is a great time to bring Rashi back because it's not too late as of right now. He is only an 80 overall, which isn't cool, but He's still very solid and very formidable as far as being a slot guy. And Jack Harold, I really, I really don't know Jack Harold's future with the team. Because like stat wise and stuff, he's really good. But he just didn't have that good of a season. I could honestly just let him continue to be receiver number two and run it similarly. Like he had an okay season. Honestly, the receivers we roll out next year is probably going to be Chase, Jack Harrell, and then Rashi Rice. Unless we draft somebody ridiculous, but it's probably going to be our three-man group. I'm going to cut Juju in this, in this portion so y'all can see it. As far as everything here, yep, that's what Xander told me about, which absolutely hurt my heart when I saw him say, Marco lost his superstar. Marco dropping down to star dev hurts him so bad. Because just that quick, Marco loses all of, if not almost all, his value. And it now comes into a situation where, once again, I think I need to look for a third corner. Because Isaiah Bolden's not appearing here, unfortunately. But we have the Jerry Sneed, we have Isaiah Bolden, I'm playing both of them. And then I could play Kyler Gordon, but I don't know if I want to. We have Brian Cook. Linebacker-wise, I believe we're good between these four dudes. We need another safety. We need another safety up front. We're solid, minus the fact we're going to lose Grover Stewart. So we need a third corner. We need another D tackle. And we need a safety. That's what we need. Because Carmani either stays back here at true safety or Carmani just comes back to being my user. 
Odds are he probably stays at true safety. Oh, but at least the team doesn't get hurt too bad, in my opinion. Certain aspects, yeah, they hurt us pretty bad. But I feel like ultimately we don't, we didn't, not don't, but we didn't lose too much. As far as everything else is concerned, I honestly could probably go cut some people to figure out money. Like maybe, maybe realistically I can bring Justin Reed. Hold on, let, let, me, let me see, because if I were to cut, not, not even if, now that we are cutting Juju, because odds are he doesn't crack the rotation just off of his age fact, and with the fact that developments in this game are so freaking weird, bro. So weird, but it's okay. Chase, still my number one guy. He is in his final season to have a chance to get Superstar, and with how much I intend on getting him the ball, if he doesn't get Superstar mid-season, he'll get Superstar at the end. I'm not stressing Chase Clay. And maybe if I'm lucky, he'll get a training camp superstar. As far as everybody else, at least Travis Kelsey didn't get crucified this season. So we at least have one more usable year of Travis Kelsey. Which, in my opinion, is genuinely beautiful to see. From what I'm looking at, though, as far as the roster is concerned, it's not looking like we have a lot of options when it comes to guys we could cut and not take a big cap penalty to but we could also play him like we we make up for some money next week once Grover Stewart is off the team because Grover is eating up a solid amount of contract I think I gave him 19 M's or something like that 20 M's total we make that money back up for Grover uh I have a very big contemplation as far as where I want things to go with Justin Reed because now I could re-sign him if I wanted to but do I trust that we can get other people? Isaiah Bolden's playing for me. Kyler Gordon, I could cut. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to cut anybody else right now. I think the only person that gets cut in this situation was the Juju pick. We love him. TikTok boy came back. He plays solid for us, but I think it's time to bring Rashi back out. And honestly, just a reason. I'm resigning him. Justin Reed's so good. I can't not like his age. The age situation with Justin Reed sucks, but I can't not resign him. Fuck it. We, we franchise tag him. Do I even? I'm about to say I'm franchise tagging him, man. I don't even have the money to franchise tag. Like we get out the negatives next week because we come up on what. Grover's money that he's getting, Sam's money, Malik Herring's money. Like we come out of the negative next week, but next, but in the free agency, I don't really think that there's too much we can go to. Like realistically, I do not think there's too much that we can do. Justin Reed, as y'all see now, is going to be my user again next year, and Carmani probably will just either yeah, Carmani is probably going to just play true safety unless I find somebody else. But as of right now, Justin Reed is going to be the user. Unless I decide to just drop him back. I, I don't know. We'll figure the whole defensive aspect out. But at the very least, man, we're just happy DJ25 is now a superstar. And let's just try to come out next season and have one hell of a year. Because this 9-8 and eight shit is not it. Oh, man. I, um, I'm in a weird space right now. Because obviously, as y'all can see from the top portion of the screen, we are currently in free agency 2. But, um, yeah, at the same time, if y'all are paying any attention to the screen, uh, yeah, we have negative 6.33 million as far as money is concerned. And that is a big problem because when it comes to Madden, obviously, sometimes I feel like the whole salary cap situation can be a little funny and i myself don't necessarily understand it to its fullest extent but um you know it is what it is when y'all are seeing this video this is going to be a singular day most likely or however i decide to do this in what non-stop november because i'm uploading every single day for the entire month of november but um yeah i'm kind of stuck because when you go to team salary here it says we have 5.43 in cap space which only drives me to believe that our cap situation is going to change.
come the next season, but I'm I'm kind of scared because if I'm not mistaken, it did the same thing last season once we got into the actual season compared to what we were able to do in free agency. So I don't necessarily understand how that whole change works. It is what it is. But we have a lot of decisions that we need to make on this team. For starters, I have three specific older guys. For example, Chris Jones, Travis Kelsey, and Joe Thune, who all are coming up on a contract year next season. And I really don't know where I'm at with any of them. Of the three of the of the three people that I currently have sitting here, the main one that I even want to consider keeping is Chris Jones because Chris Jones has been so so impactful for me as far as my defensive line is concerned. He's literally been my best defensive lineman in the two seasons that we've played and losing Chris Jones would be such a big hit while at the same time losing Travis Kelsey would be such a big hit because Travis Kelsey has been my second best guy first season he was our best guy and it's just like I'm conflicted because there's a very solid chance that next season Travis Kelsey does not get re-signed because he will be a 36 year old tight end that has already lost three speed in his first year after year one and then this year i believe he lost more overall and he also lost x factor and went down to superstar so i genuinely think although chiefs fans you probably love him shit everyone loves travis kelsey realistically i don't think travis kelsey gets re-signed next season and as far as joe thune is concerned it's not as important to really be frightened with linemen especially considering the fact that i have the young lineman noah not and i could always draft another tackle but i'm thinking what i do with joe thuny because i already put it in the chat i'm gonna look for a joe thuny and isaiah pacheco trade package because obviously as y'all saw he has one year remaining but since we have our running back, I think I could find a second guy or just do what most people do and just have DJ be the full-time dude since there are no injuries in this league. So I don't have to worry about DJ getting injured. And I believe Pacheco still has very good value and somebody would want him on top of literally a superstar lineman. So I feel like I could find a trade with them. That would free up some cap, albeit we would take a slight penalty for Joe Thune, but I don't think it's a penalty that necessarily kills me, which is what I'm okay with taking at this point. Because on top of losing them, I have to figure out the Justin Reed situation, which ultimately would probably just end up being maybe getting a replacement for him at that point, as well as Kyler Gordon, he can go. Brian Cook, we have to figure out what's gonna happen with him at that point. Even my boy Chanel records, like, I might even have to figure out what goes down with Chanel because it all really depends on how much money we have next season. Off rips to start the season next year, though, since I have Nick Bolton locked up at this point, and there's literally no question as to who and what Nick Bolton can be. We're probably going to play Nick Bolton a bit more than we play Chanel because if money is really as tight as I believe it possibly will be there is like a solid chance that Chanel Records doesn't even end up on the team after next season so at the very least we get one more season of my boy Chanel Records we don't care about Watson we really don't care about Sky Moore we don't care about Williams all these other guys we really don't care about them ultimately leaving the team but the biggest pictures that we have to pay attention to is Chanel Records which ultimately isn't really a bigger picture or biggest picture because obviously I could just play Nick Bolton but Joe Thune, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones and Isaiah Pacheco I need to figure out what I want to do with Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey Joe Thune and Isaiah Pacheco I'm almost positive I can get a trade package for those guys but the other guys I just gotta figure out what to do with them we have no money. I 
don't even think I can really cut people at this point. And with the trade, I'm really contemplating what I want to try to get. Because I'm not too sure what people will offer, obviously. But a second receiver would be nice. Or a third receiver, I guess you could say. Which would assist my team in not really having to draft one. Or even some type of ability on defense to assist our defense out because our defense literally lost every single ability we had i lost both of my superstar corners only thing that stayed is chris jones and i'm gonna i might as well just add this portion now rather than just mentioning it you know later on down the line with the way that these online cfms typically work there is typically a draft that is set in order and basically the time for that draft is usually set in stone essentially so when the draft is going to be taking place for us i'm not too sure if i'm going to actually be able to draft so i'm really leaving what our team drafts in the hands of the matic gods this season and it's not really a good way to go about it but at the same time i uh I don't really have much choice so things that i want to target is i want to i want to detackle we need a detackle because ultimately we need to start bringing up the predecessor to our boy um chris jones and then on top of that i need a tight end because once again we need to start looking for the predecessor to our boy travis kelsey and jaleel young looks nice he probably don't make it to us but jaleel young looks nice just off of first glance, Jalil Young looks nice. So tight end, D tackle, and obviously like a left tackle is needed in case we do actually move Thuni. Because if we move Thuni, that just means Noah Knott finally gets to play his proper position. And then I just got to figure out a left tackle, even though obviously I do technically have the Chiefs real left tackle. But you would rather have younger and better as far as left tackles concerned. Other than that, I think we're really just in a situation where we kind of just have a we kind of just have a run it back team outside of the rookies that I'm going to get signed for us based off whatever EA does. And honestly, just to clear up a little bit of money, I'm thinking I just cut some of these guys now. Nah, nah, nah. I'm gonna leave it be. I just wanted to drop in really quickly and leave this little portion before you guys ultimately probably see me at like y'all might see me at draft recap because around the time that the actual draft does take place is around the time when um I will be getting home because the draft is at what fucking hold on let me check real real quick just so I can actually have for you guys so the draft itself is going to be at 8 p.m cst which is 9 p.m for me and i won't be home until like 10 30 so y'all either catch me in draft recap or y'all catch me in preseason uh it's really shitty that i'm not going to be able to draft but ultimately sometimes things just gotta happen if this ends up working out the way that i kind of intended to for this specific video it's not really going to matter if y'all see the draft or not because the draft will honestly just make the video longer. But hey man, I will catch y'all in most likely preseason week one. No guarantees, maybe by some stretch of luck or some shit like that, I find a way to make the draft or come somewhere down the line. A trade is made ultimately with Thuni and Pacheco. Who fucking knows, bro? Who fucking knows? But I just wanted to fill y'all in on why there is a lack of free agency because we have no fucking money to spend bro i thought we were broke last year when we just brought in bryce huff grover stewart i thought we were broke last year nah bro we're we're a different type of broke this year like, we really have no money like we owe the commissioner money at this point well like i told y'all man i was going to catch y'all in preseason and it is preseason week one obviously as y'all can see training camps you know all of that shit bang as i told y'all though i uh unfortunately had to miss the draft and what the hell somebody played a preseason game okay no questions there but um 
Yeah, I had to miss the draft. So as far as like, honestly, the people that we drafted, I genuinely have no idea what was done with our team as far as the draft is concerned. But one thing that I am going to address is that as far as the situation I mentioned when it came to us having to resign basically a bunch of big important players. Now, the trade that we're making right here is I am going to be moving Isaiah Pacheco and Joe Thune, old dude that I don't want to resign, and then a running back who honestly, while I do love P, I don't see a plan resigning him. For my boy Quay, my boy Quay Skywalker and Sean Murphy Bunting. Now, once I accept this, I'm going to ex explain it more thoroughly as we go and look at certain things. You know what I'm saying? So, hello. My game just froze up. That just threw me off. Okay, but I'm going to go and we're going to check out our team as of right now. I'm going to press weekly strategy just to see what exactly my team drafted because typically they put your rookies here. So, from what it looks like, it looks like we drafted a D we drafted a uh, we drafted an entirely different line okay well as far as the line is concerned i, I mean I, I, I don't i don't know what's going on there so we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this once we uh you know explore the team a bit but before we explore the team i'm i'm honestly not going to look at anything i'm going to just go straight to the information that i want to explain to you i'm gonna try my hardest not to pay attention to nothing Quay Skywalker. The reason why I wanted to trade for Quay Walker is because he is a 25-year-old, 6'4", 88 speed, middle linebacker. I tend to use middle linebackers quite often. In this situation, he's on a two-year deal, and I believe he gets his fifth-year option with basically being a young guy on a young contract. And ultimately, in his case, <clears throat> it sucks but he kind of replaces Chanel records like the way that i'm seeing that is quay walker is i would probably say a better version of nick bolton right now while nick bolton is higher in overall and all of that obviously nick bolton could get breakouts but in quay walker's case quay walker is already at that breakout point and he's currently an 84 field general which literally means if i'm not mistaken i think you get it yeah you get it at 90 which means in literally six upgrades quay walker gets quay work quay walker is a lurker middle linebacker and honestly if he has a good season as long as weekly strategy or along with weekly strategy he'll be a lurker middle linebacker by the end of this season not even by the end of this season probably in like the middle portion honestly so quay walker big big pickup in my opinion i'm gonna uh I have to make sure that we don't have repeat abilities because that's one of the things that we do in this league is we try to avoid having repeat abilities. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pressure on them. So big hits matter more. And then give me one second to not even give me one second. I'm going to just talk through this whole thing with you guys, obviously. What does Chris Jones have on him? Chris Jones has El Toro, under pressure, double or nothing, and inside stuff. Okay, so I can put no outsiders on Quay. I got to take under pressure also. I'll put no outsiders on him. We don't try to duplicate abilities because certain abilities in this game can be really freaking overpowered. If you played Madden, you understand. But for right now, he'll just be, what, Crusher and no outsiders? Or I could put it out of my way. Or even short route. Nah. I'm going to just put Crusher, no outsiders. And then just leave my reader right now the main goal of quay walker is to get him to the point where he is a lurker middle linebacker and obviously unfortunately <laughs> he takes our boy chanel record spot now as far as the team i'm going to look at some of our positions y'all are going to look with me and see if we notice anybody new that's kind of funny that davis mills is our backup i'm not seeing any tight ends or receivers so as far as the receiving room i don't think my team drafted one so it's looking like it's chase claypool rashi and jack harold this season Rashi definitely is going to be my slot guy. Jack Harrell's going back to the number two spot. We seem to... Oh, no, that's not a new guy. Oh, you're a real person. Okay, so that's not a rookie. I don't think we drafted a receiver at all. At all. We drafted this rookie. And we, we drafted a few rookie linemen, but I think at this point, we're probably just going to run with the Chiefs' actual left tackle. And I believe his name is Wayne Morris or Wanya Morris. Probably just going to be vibing out with him since we don't have a left tackle currently. And 
they moved Noah not to the right for some reason. I, I don't know why they did that to my line, but it is what it is. Honestly, we just have a hole on the left side. It is what it is in that aspect. I literally didn't press the defense, and I saw that my team drafted a thousand fucking defensive linemen. If none of y'all are hidden, why did we even draft them? Okay, so this, oh, another ugly face scan. He's not hidden. He's not hidden. Holy, my team missed in the draft. They didn't draft anyone worth mentioning. Spellman. Boy, they didn't draft anything worth mentioning. Anything at all. Holy, that's tough. And I mean tough for all the wrong reasons. But as far as the Sean Murphy bunting um, trade, basically, the intent with Sean Murphy bunting is just to let him be a fill-in type dude as, as a corner. He's serviceable, six foot, 92 speed, 93 excel. He can play as my slot corner this season and I'll have absolutely no issue with it. Basically, he's under contract for a good amount of time on a cheap contract, so he doesn't hurt me at all. Honestly, he's just gonna be quarterback number three, most likely behind, um, Isaiah Bolden and Legereus Sneed. It is what it is on that on that forefront. As far as what do I even want to address next? As far as the weekly strategy, who oh, well the people who are going to be on this is obviously like I said I want to work on Quay Walker and getting Quay Walker to that lurker. Obviously Chase Clay. As far as other people though, I'm I'm genuinely not too sure. Like genuinely not too sure. Like Rashi, uh, that that one makes sense. I might as well have my receiving guys here. Kendall Shields, he can stay. Even though he's normal, he'll probably be one of my rushes. I don't really know how I'm gonna use those rushes, honestly, because none of them are really good. It seems like we drafted a bunch of dudes, but none of them are actually any good. I want to see if we can develop Sean Starks at all, and then, um, honestly, a lot of these guys don't matter, so we're just going to put Carl Loftus. None of the rookies that we do have are really, or not really, but they don't really show any talent. From what I saw, it doesn't look like my team drafted a single hidden guy this season. It doesn't look like they drafted a single hidden player this season, and as far as the re-signed players is concerned, See, like, I don't understand that. Now we have 85 mil in cap, which is crazy to me. If I'm just going to address these people right now, Chris Jones probably doesn't get re-signed just off from, from a money standpoint. Kyler Gordon most likely doesn't get re-signed unless at some point I move him back to safety and then push Carmani Exchange out of the rotation. Brian Cook, he's been really good for me. He probably comes back and he's cheap. Chanel Records, unfortunately, is out the door. Justin Reed probably comes back just because of uh, user ability. Jalen Watson won't be back. Sky Moore won't be back. Joshua Williams won't be back. Travis Kelsey, while I want to bring him back, if, if it's cheap enough, I'll bring him back because why the hell not? But I want to do it on like a team-friendly type deal because if he does lose that superstar, he's literally just a dead contract and he would just be here because he's Travis Kelsey. As far as that, I don't think anybody else here, yeah, none of these other guys matter. Besides Felix, we accept Felix's contract. I mean, we accept Felix's fifth-year option. All right, well, there's a very, very solid chance that uh, we start the season off one another, but I'm going to go into it optimistic. Um, we play Steelers, and then we have the Chargers, followed by Eagles, Bills, Chargers. Our first five games are interesting, I'd say the least. Then that's followed by Titans, Raiders, Texans, Giants, Broncos, Raiders, Cowboys, Jaguars, Broncos, Bears, Colts, Commanders. Okay, compared to last year, our schedule is nowhere near as much of a gauntlet as it was last season. But all in all, obviously, we do still have our tough matchups. So I think that's about all that we have for this little portion. I'm not too sure when exactly we're simming to week one. But I'm going to have the official year three depth chart for you guys and all of that come episode one. Well, not episode one, but come game one. I will catch you boys in week one at this point. Oh, man. Wish us luck. Of course, my first game of the season is against the fucking Steelers, bro. Just my luck. Oh, man. First kickoff of year three is underway. Now, I want to... 
I want to win this game. I would love to be able to like win big and make like a statement type of victory, but uh, realistically, I'm trying a new playbook. I decided for this season I might try to work with. Um, I'm using Chicago's playbook for this season, or at least for right now. Streak him, and then I'll put you on a wheel. And Patty did not take off at all. Okay, first drive is a nasty three and out. I guess we're both kind of coming into this game offensively a bit confused. Oh yeah, those type of routes. But they don't they don't take any type of confusion or any type of understanding on that. Najee absolutely killed whoever was supposed to be chasing him. I know Najee's good, but damn. And then no, I'm gonna just I'm gonna trust my gut. I trusted my gut and it ended up getting us a sack. Let's go SMB. A very big success for the first drive of the, I mean, first defensive drive of the year. Offensively, on the other hand, though, that was terrible. I need to run that. He fumbled it into the lineman's hands. <laughs> yes, back into field goal range. I'll take No fucking way, EA. Whatever, I'm gonna let Quake Skywalker go and I'm gonna use her Nick. Yes, sir. Okay, Dre Pryor? I should have probably played my guys off. Oh, that is, that is horrid. That is horrid. But these quarterbacks are looking like prime week one quarterbacks right now, boy. We are looking like prime elites week one quarterbacks. That's what we're looking like right now. For us last year, give the ball to DJ. Give the ball to DJ. Let DJ do something. Make something shake, DJ. Make something shake, DJ. Going to streak chase on the chances he beats James Pierre. Off rip. Yep, that's that's one of the Madden passes, bro. You can't put a ball over a man's fucking head. I don't understand that. Uh, okay, come on, boys. Give me another good defensive drive. No fucking way. He I'm gonna put Bryce up on this hard flat. I'm thinking something for it. You get this. Is. Go, Brian. Go, Brian. I need you to get home. I need you to go home, Brian. I need you to go home, Brian Cook. Brian Cook, I need you to get in the house. Oh, almost. Almost, Brian Cook. I needed you to take it home, my boy. And put Chase on the corner. Yep. Chase Claypool. Chase Claypool. There we go, baby. Defensive drive team. Can I get another good defensive drive? Turnover would be beautiful. A turnover would be beautiful. Can we get another good defensive drive? Unlucky. I am honestly surprised, though, he's not using Najee more than he has this game. Not my guy just missing the ball completely. I know that feeling. I know that pain. I know that pain all too well. Right there. If he if he scored a touchdown on that drive, I wouldn't even have been mildly mad. Because he did a hell of a job. And I mean a hell of a job. Stopping that play. All right, Jay Reed. Take one. Go to the seam. Yeah. We'll do two running back systems. I probably won't be able to do a double running back system until after week two because I would have to sign another guy. Because the dude on contract is not touching my football field. Someone go get him. Fucking broken plays, man. 
broken play after broken play after broken fucking play. Our job's to sit in the middle of the field. Great play. Great, great play. Does he go for this? Same thing. Our responsibility is to sit in the middle of the field. Good stop. Good, good stop. Our defense is looking nice right now. This is definitely probably the worst offense I've seen him play. Oh, yeah. DJ to pinball. DJ to pinball. DJ to pinball. Oh, you got to outrun that, though. Team shall forever ride. There we go. It's open here on this. But pa Patty can make that pass. I gotta take the guaranteed points and not even put risk factor into this situation. Let's take my three. We're up seven. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Trey Colin got home. Let's do this, Clay Skywalker. Our, our responsibility is Deontay. Oh no. Get out. So many people do that little dive where you like literally lunge your body forward for like three, four yards. I don't know how to do that shit, but it works so well. Somebody punch it. Nope. We looked real we've looked really good in man so far. I left the scene. I left the scene. Come on defense. Oh, I keep forgetting about I keep forgetting about the fact Buck can step up and go. Ooh. That's a dot. I respect it. Ooh boy, do I punt this? There we go, Sean Starks. Get on the floor. There we go, Sean Starks. Is literally crazy people. Um, get, get, a, get a little screen in. Get a little screen action in. Okay, DJ. I'm going to go play action on the, on the, the rare possibility. Okay, uh, he beat him, but I didn't get out to play action fast enough. Oh my god, Patty almost threw a pick. Patty, who the fuck are you throwing that to? Let's get on the ground. Like, like there's part of me that... You know, he, he just hasn't beaten James Pierre all game. He hasn't beaten him all game. Do your job. Add the fucking tush push. We should be able to get this. Even if y'all don't catch a pick or get a turnover, just keep them on, keep them inbounds, keep the clock moving, keep them in front of you. Come on. Yep. He's about to take a shot, and I can't get over it. Buck is selling. Or Great defense that forces a timeout. Hey, even if it's and even if it's a first down, keep it in play. Oh, I just gotta have better user work on that. It gets beat. We were meant to lose. It just wasn't meant to happen if Prevent gets beat for a touchdown. Good defense. Oh, that was a fucking game and a half, bro. One in the books, and Clay Skywalker already has his first upgrade. We're obviously going to be upgrading Field General, and I think here he gets another ability slot, right? Yeah, Ws.
Uh, I don't even know what I would want to put on them. I honestly don't. Not demoralizer persistent. No, that doesn't necessarily matter. Um, honestly, I don't know what to put on them. I really don't. For right now, I guess I'll just put strip specialist on. No, I think I have strip specialist somewhere else. Fuck it. We'll, we'll just keep Stonewall on him. Why not? Why not? I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to. I don't want to OD or have too many of the same abilities. But hey, man, somehow we walk out of there with a victory in a very important matchup with the Steelers that could ultimately have some type of playoff implications on it come into the season as of right now i don't know if it will Ugh. camp standout i don't think felix got it i'm pretty positive he didn't in fact yeah but he didn't get it done yeah i i had a feeling felix didn't get it unfortunate but we got the dub that's all that really mattered for me Trying to get it to chase also didn't work. Or shit, like even camp standout didn't work. Not camp standout, but um, whatever this thing is called. I forget what it's called. But we got the dub. We still got a thousand XP to everybody. That playbook was weird. It was rough. I didn't have plays like the plays that I typically run, at least passing wise. Rushing wise, I feel like in this game, rushing wise, it's relatively easy to find runs that really do work. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna do this quick, check this thing, because if this does end up being a full season video, I don't want these to be too long. Offensively, we had a very mid game, in my opinion. Defensively, we played great. Patty only had 153 on 10 completions and 18 yards. Buck had one for one. Patty was one for one. Rushing yards. DJ had 11 carries for 101 yards, no touchdown. Patty had three for 12 and a touchdown. That's a W. Receiving wise, Travis had 3 for 64, DJ had 3 for 42, Sean Starks 1 for 21, Chase Claypool 2 for 20, Jack Harrell 1 for 6. Like, I tried it for one game, at least with the new playbook, but honestly, at least for Chiefs franchise, I think I might just go back to the same playbook, because that was difficult, like really difficult. Defensive-wise, we played well. Quay, all he had was tackles. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. We got a dub. And we got a lot of sacks that game. Five? Yeah, we got five sacks that game. Defensively, we played really good. Really good. Even Brian Cook ended up having a pick. TFL-wise, we had, what, three, two? I'm not going to lie to you. Dre Pryor might have a breakout next week. Dre Pryor might have a breakout next week. But next week, we're going back to Las Vegas playbook. I'm going to be honest with you. I enjoyed parts of the Bears playbook, but at the same time, my offense didn't feel good. And having an offense that doesn't feel good is kind of a setup for failure. I'm not going to lie to you. So it be what it be. It be what it be. I ain't going to lie to you. It be what it be. I'm going to catch y'all in week two against the Chargers. Let's get it, boy. Chiefs Kingdom. We starting out 1-0. It's already a good start. Hey, man. We're 1-0. Episode 19. We're playing against a divisional matchup, so this is a very, very, very big game. Um, part of me wants to do the Chase Claypool workout, but I'm not going to since basically I have the game essentially lined up for you guys. We play against the Chargers, who um, I could say respectfully, similar to every other team in our division, we have played pretty well against them like as far as the matchups against the guy dj 25 has an upgrade i'm sorry i had to, I had to pause real quick this time. dj 25 has an upgrade. change of direction great tackle beautiful but as far as the matchups that we've had against him we have upgraded rashi rice but the chargers has gotten us really good one time and that was the first time we played them other than that we've been pretty well off when it came to actually playing him so that is a plus but then again, that kind of can be said about literally every single team that is in our division. So, uh, yeah, it kind of is what it is realistically. Honestly, the way that I just want to approach this game is we just got to come in, bro, and we just got to, you know what I'm saying, 
<sighs> just come in and do our job. It's as simple as that. All right, boys, game two. Still in Chicago playbook. I'm not going to... Oh, I forgot to do something. Because my stupid self, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in the last episode. Oh, good hit, rookie. But I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in the last episode that you're not allowed to have duplicate abilities. You're not allowed to have duplicate abilities on alike positions. My stupid self didn't pay no mind to that. So I can put under pressure on Quay Walker. So I think what I'm going to be doing at not think after this game, I'm going to be putting under pressure on Quay Walker because I have it on Chris Jones, but I'm going to be putting under pressure on Quay Walker other than Stonewall because Stonewall doesn't necessarily do anything for me. In my opinion, at least. My fault. I'm saying Quay, Quay Walker. Who is that? I meant Quay Skywalker disrespect oh Clayton Johnston got superstar that is a dub that is a dub I I highly respect that all right unlike last week we don't have the luxury of our defense getting that initial stop that we did last week so we kind of just got to come out here and bang bang you know what I'm saying I still want to really look to get chased the ball but I don't want to look to do it almost to the point where I make my offense look bad in the process. I'm gonna give it to DJ here rather than trying to work chasing for a touchdown. Gotta get a workhorse the ball, gotta get a workhorse the ball. That is a much, much better offensive drive than we had all of last week. I'm not sure when this video will be out in the timeline of NSN, honestly, but uh, how are you guys enjoying it so far? I'm really not sure how exactly it's doing, but I know Chase Claypool is down there, and I know I'm about to throw the ball up to Chase Claypool, and Asante Samuels catch it? Did Patty underthrow him? This is about to be that RPO play everybody runs. I already know it. I can see it. Maybe it's not. He's doing a lot of audibles. Hey, come on, EA! Hey, bro, come on. What's up, NATO? Bro, I couldn't be on that any better. EA, come on, bro. Thank you. Oh, I'm about to say, like, I don't even want to be down here, but you cannot bail out bad plays. Good pick, SMB. Don't want to be right in front of my own end zone. But shit, bro, like that, that was a beautiful read on my end and we just couldn't get to the ball. Hella unfortunate. Oh, Chase is having a day. Chase is having him a day. Oh man, okay, we're looking good on offense right now though. That's one thing I say. We are looking really good on the offensive end. Okay, Jack is wide open. Get you one, Jack. Get you one, Jack. I actually don't. Oh my God! Get to it. Get to it, Chris Jones. Quay Skywalker with the strip. No. Are you serious right now? What happened? When did I touch? I, I can't. You can't make that up. You can't make that up. That is fucking bailout if I've ever fucking seen it, bro. Like, I need to go back and watch that play and see what the fuck did I do. That is bailout if I have ever seen it before in my life. Holy, bro. His whole team is really compact on this. Oh, come on, man. Oh, okay. That didn't work. Maybe I just... I should have beamed it, probably. There it is. Rashi Rice in the scene. Touchdown, baby, with not much time to spare. Four seconds is still more than enough for a kick return. Oh, the irony. I gave him too much time. You know it's bad when you gotta say too much time is four seconds. I swear to you, bro, the, the amount of drops I have be having me perplexed. They really do. Get the ball to Sean Starks. At least Sean Starks has more surefire hands than my literal best receiver. I came out in the wrong thing. I just realized what I pressed. 
Get in there, Chase. Yes, sir. There goes your touchdown, Chase. There goes your passing touchdown, Chase. That was the weirdest thing I have seen. <clears throat> Clay Walker, you do this. Carmani Exchange. I'm using you. Where are you? Oh, I ran into my own guy. I ran into my own guy, and then Madden Jukes are fucking crazy. I've taken one, but I'll take another one. Honestly. The idiot in me knows... The idiot... Oh, he messed it up. The idiot in me knows no bounds. If Chase Claypool is open, I will throw the ball to Chase Claypool. It's that simple. It's my guy. Who would have thought that trading for Chase Claypool... Like I said, Trent McDuffie was a necessary sacrifice. That's all I got to say. Like, even though Rashi, I don't recall him catching many passes. I know he has at least a touchdown. Oh, uh, Keenan. Keenan killed us. Keenan killed me on a baby seam, bro. On a baby seam, too? I was under the impression Jack's corner route was going to go a lot deeper than that. I guess it didn't. I mean, uh, it is what it is. We're still up 10 points with two minutes left. This is definitely our game to lose. Gotta let the, let the young kicker, whoever the hell he is, come out, you know, get some reps now. Nah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just run to a scene, run to Keenan Allen the scene. Oh, he threw it at Trey Colin. Oh, that's GG's. That's GG's. That is GG's. He threw the ball at Trey Colin. I couldn't ask for an easier score than that. But I want to properly take claim of the AFC West as being my division. We've already proved it now through two seasons, and I want to keep it going throughout the entirety of this cycle. Like, realistically. But I think we still have a bit of work to do. I wouldn't say, like, we're too far off offensively. I got to keep giving Bears a chance, though, because Trey Cullen now has two interceptions. I might just rock with the Bears playbook until we lose with it, because the one thing that I have to acknowledge, almost, is that Bears playbook, albeit a lot of plays, I don't necessarily feel comfortable with getting all of my guys involved. I can still run the ball, and it is more fun, and it has a lot more creative freedom, and a lot ways, a lot more ways that I can keep my opponent guessing. So I guess for right now, we will rock with Bears playbook, at least for right now, at least for right now. Rushing-wise, DJ had 13 carries, 106 yards, one touchdown. That is now back-to-back 100-yard games from DJ25. Patty has six carries for 14. <laughs> Running the ball with Patrick Mahomes is just so funny to me for some reason. I don't understand why. And then receiving-wise, Chase Claypool had eight receptions for 172 yards and two touchdowns. And I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm, I'm not going to lie to you at all. If this game here... This eight receptions, 172, and then two touchdowns triggers a breakout. I just might go back to Vegas playbook for next week because in that playbook, I know I can get Chase the ball in specific plays if I just throw him the ball enough. So if this triggers a breakout, I'm going back to Vegas for one game. I'm going back to Vegas for one game. Win or lose, our only goal is going to be to get Chase as superstar. Overall, we're feeling really good. I... This is even more of a, of a sign that in Bears playbook, I'm struggling so much to get these guys involved, but they have touchdowns. So they're, they found the end zone, but they're not finding the yards. Which is, it's so conflicting to me, like dangerously conflicting, but as of right now, it is what it is. As of right now, it really is what it is. I think starting next week though, I might, go back to figuring out how to get the whole two running back system back in order or i might just keep bj don't really know honestly we're just rooting on that chase capable breakout your boy hitty out peace i hope y'all enjoy it. i'll catch y'all in episode 20 regardless of what type of episode it is and then we have heavy rain which is also a pretty interesting thing one thing that i like to do when it comes to these franchises or these leagues as a whole is i like to press the the uh, what could you say? The natural, not natural disasters, natural occurrences. I don't, I don't know what the proper word is right now. But I like to use, I like to play in the environment. You know what I'm saying? Play in non-ideal situations, essentially. I think one of, if not my main priority, still, as I mentioned at the beginning of the season, however, is to continue to still get the ball to Chase Claypool. As of right now, Chase is at 
10 receptions, 192 yards, and three touchdowns. I believe that as of right now, our goal is to still get him the ball. And I mean, like, get him the ball probably as much as possible, realistically. All right, so we're probably going to be getting into this game very shortly, so I'm going to catch y'all in this matchup against the Eagles, boys. Wish us luck. Damn, Isaiah Bolden did that instantly. I wanted to bring that out. Okay. But, um, yeah, I'm still in Bears playbook right now. I think I kind of made it a deal or a goal of my own that I'm going to run Bears playbook until I lose a game. So, as of right now, we're in Bears playbook. One thing I kind of want to try to focus on a bit is trying to see if I can get the tandem breakout on my team because, honestly... If I'm thinking off the top of my head, I do not know if I've ever actually successfully got the tandem breakout completed, so I don't really know what it gets me. So I know I gotta get Jack Harrell 150. So we're gonna try to try to work on that early, you know what I'm saying? Try to work on that early, you know what I'm saying? See how fast I can get Jack Harrell to 150 because honestly, what I really want for this team this season. I want to get my receivers involved because, as I mentioned, I'm pretty sure in episode 19, while Patrick Mahomes is amazing for throwing the ball, and I'm pretty sure he makes life easy for literally anyone that ever ends up with Chiefs in a franchise. At the same time, he doesn't necessarily make your receivers good. And I feel like if my receivers had routes, they would be, not routes, but they had better route running off of like abilities and shit like that. They'd be even better than they already are. And we just had probably the most seamless, oh go ahead Rashi, start real quick. We just had probably the most seamless offense I've had in a long time in Bears play. Like a dog, you get one play. Don't fuck this up. Carmani exchange, baby. Karma, take it to the house. Hold on, hold on, Carmani. Hold on. Car God damn it! Why do you gotta be so slow? Ah, uh, nope. I can't even throw it to Chase now. If I wanted to, he's still in the house. That's unfortunate. We have to walk out of here with three. When Patrick Mahomes had Jack Harrell wide open in the end zone, wide open in the end zone. We'll take it though. Two possession lead, ten to zero. Defense, come out here and give me another stop. Defense is playing absolutely shut down. This this one is looking like it might get out of hand. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, boy. Chase Claypool in a one-on-one -on, -one on the left side of the field. Probably just gets me tingling, bro. Throw it right over Dean. Throw it right over a middle linebacker. Sheesh. Sheesh. We, we kind of cooking today, bro. Oh my gosh, SMB was an amazing pickup. SMB was an amazing pickup. Who would have thought, bro? Sean Murphy Bunting. This is a Jack Harold ball. Or not. Oh, Patty. Patty for the touchdown. Way to tackle me into the end zone, baby. I respect it. I respect the play call. Is he taking three? I wholeheartedly respect the call. Wholeheartedly. Does he trust Devonta Smith more or AJ Brown? I'm thinking AJ Brown. No, he goes to Swifty. Oh, it was a dot, but he was out of bounds. So let's put double drags out on this and we look to Jack. Or we don't. Or we don't. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's the RPO again. Every time I see people run that, I just zoom forward because so many people run that play. Honestly, I do not want I don't want to get another stop, but I do want I want those 33 yards. I need to sit down. I need 33 yards. Oh, there's his yards. And get out of bounds. Okay, that's fine. We're good now. 
All right, boys, post game. That was a phenomenal one for us. Bryce Huff has a upgrade. WWW is. I'm going to upgrade Speed Rusher on him. Uh, Bryce Huff, not really sure where his future lies with us, ultimately, with him being, what, 27? Yeah, if Bryce Huff doesn't get a breakout this year, I'm not really too sure where his future lies with us. And then, obviously, the one, the only, Chase Claypool also has an upgrade. We're going to go deep threat on Chase Claypool with the hopes he gets a speed upgrade. No, but he gets another release. So right now, Chase Claypool's release is currently a 92. Holy, bro. As far as stats are concerned for our Week 3 game, DJ finally had a bad one, but... Patty had 378 in the air with two touchdowns on 19 attempts, 15 completions. Perfect passer rating, beautiful to see. DJ only had 13 attempts for 39 yards, while Patty had two carries for 18 yards and two touchdowns. That is actually a W. Receiving wise, Jack Harold, six receptions, 155 yards. Travis Kelsey had two for 122 and a touchdown. Uh, Chase Claypool, three for 57. Rashi had one for 24 in a touchdown, like in that first first drive. Matt Bushman, he had two, and then Sean Sarks also had one. Actually, I gotta go look at my defenders. I didn't see, I didn't see what the defenders did. My fault, my fault, my fault. Can't can't leave the boys out. Can't leave the boys out because they did a phenomenal job. They pitched a three-point game that week. Can't ask for any more. So as far as Quay Skywalker, he had his interception for a touchdown. TFL wise, Marco had a TFL and a sack. Yeah, no one had a phenomenal sad game, but both Marco and SMB both got one. And the interception was SMB got one, Isaiah Bolden got one, Carmani Exchange got one, and then Clay Skywalker got one. So, going into week four, we're feeling, we're feeling really good as a team right now. Like, my offense is feeling kind of fluent in this Bears playbook. My defense is also feeling really good in a normal playbook I've been running this whole time. Patty's currently seven touchdowns for two picks with 900 yards. DJ's currently 37 carries for 246 yards and a tutty. Patty with 11 carries, 44 yards and three touchdowns. That's a dub. <laughs> and then Chase Claypool has 13 receptions for 249 and three touchdowns. Travis Kelsey, nine for 233 and a touchdown. Jack Harrell, nine for 190 and a touchdown. Team's looking, looking and feeling really good right now. End of the day, bro. We're feeling good, man. I will catch y'all in our next week's matchup against the Buffalo Bills. Catch y'all in Chiefs Kingdom. As far as the breakout for Jack Harold, I think, honestly, all that did was ju it just gives me a boost. I don't think that tandem breakout is going to give me the ability to get him superstar, which kind of sucks. It is what it is. As far as QB1 check-in, I'm not too sure why we're having... Oh, we're having a QB1 check-in for a good reason. Okay, guess we're just going to praise Patty. And then outside of that, only other thing we got is our trainings. This is a matchup that we've now seen multiple times throughout this franchise. I believe I played him in the regular season in year one, and we've played two separate times now in the playoffs. So Chiefs are, more, not Chiefs, but the Bills are more or less of a already known opponent, in my opinion. So maybe, or not even maybe, we're going to just try to go in this and just collect it up. Respectfully. Nobody with any upgrades worth a damn. Just go in this with a positive mindset. Just, just try to collect it up. Right now, what I want to be able to do with this team is hold on to the potential one seed for as long as I possibly can. Let's hold on to this potential one seed spot for potentially as long as I literally can. And try to hopefully do something in the playoffs, bro. That's all I want. Just Let's just do something in the playoffs. Unlike the last few games where I kind of came out here with more of an intent to pass to my, my receivers, I think I'm going to come into this game and try to follow, I guess you could say, a similar play style to how I did in years one and years two, where basically we're running the ball with DJ. Because obviously DJ is, in my opinion, probably the second best offensive guy I have right now. Obviously, I love Travis Kelsey, but with him getting up there in age, I believe that his value on the team, unfortunately, is at a point where it's now diminishing. Wow, DJ Love. I said DJ Love. Rest in peace to DJ Love, bro. <laughs> 
But while on the other hand, Demarcus Jackson is in an area where he's only getting better. And by the end of the year, bro is probably going to be like, like a 90 plus overall. By the end of the season, DJ is going to probably be a 90 plus overall. Oh, and I'm getting that itch. I'm getting the itch, but I'm going I'm to be smart. I, I got that itch to throw the ball up in the air and just try to go for the touchdown right there to Chase Claypool, but oh, against my better judgment, I didn't throw it. However, on this, I'm definitely going to do that. However, on that route, you're not about to show me a route that simple and think I'm not going to go for it. And then at the same time, you're not about to be out here in this broken coverage and think I'm not about to I can't actually always go with Okay, we'll just do this then. Why not? Jailbreak screen. Touchdown to Rashi Rice. Once again we have an opening drive that is literally almost as perfect as perfect can be. Here I wanna just come out and man. Oftentimes what I like to do is unless the zone has been working I kind of prefer man in the third down type of situations. Holy Stefan Diggs. Holy Stefan Diggs. Okay, Isaiah Bolden cannot hold Stefan. I'm thinking this. Mm, nah, he doesn't run a screen or something. Like Diggs, does he? Oh, I actually ran. I read to. I read it and ran to the right spot, but then questioned it. I literally read it, ran to the right spot, made him throw a brain dead read, but then I questioned myself. Oh my gosh, that was actually perfect. That was literally perfect. Literally perfect. We just we just screwed ourselves out of a stop. There we go, that's a sack. George Karloff just got one now, but now I need some type of like we can't give up these type of plays where he's getting big yardage just off the fact that we don't get we're not getting pressure on some of these big important plays. Oh, okay. He threw it to Quay Walker. Come on, Quay Skywalker. Come on, Quay Skywalker. Big lurker on the inbound. Big lurker incoming, I guess. We take what we can get, bro. We take donations around here too. Know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, Sean Starks. There we go. There we go, defense. That's all we needed. I just needed one. I just needed something to give us a little bit of life, and that was it. I'm blitzing everything. Oh, oh, the levels of bail are actually annoying. The goal down here is really just points. So if I have to take care of it. Pass interference, but it's a touchdown anyway. I'm about to say, bro, how many how many times are people gonna get away with that crap against me? Cause it's like multiple people do it. I'm not sure if it's a purposeful thing or if it just happens because it just happens by accident. But I never get those calls, and I don't understand why. <laughs> Come on, Carmoni. Right back to. And this time he gets it. There we go. Oh, once again, I need a stop. And I don't even know how we get it. Put a screen. Follow your man. Follow your man, DJ. Oh, I gotta take the extra point. There's no point in taking two. Okay. I probably shouldn't have scored that touchdown, but I probably shouldn't have scored that touchdown. I gave him 24 seconds. 24 seconds in the timeout is more than enough time to score with the way my defense has been playing. Oh, thank God, bro. Ugh, post game. We have two upgrades. A cool Trey Colon upgrade. W's. Trey Colon had one of the interceptions that we had that game. Much, much needed interception. We love you, Trey Colon. And then we have one for Sean Starks or potentially, you know, maybe the Travis Kelsey predecessor. Probably not with the way his speed looks, but it is what it is. We, we, we aren't stressing it right now with the fact that Travis Kelsey might ultimately come back and play for us. 
right now, as the stats look, y'all saw what happened that game. Patrick Mahomes, 31 attempts, 5 touchdowns, 21 completions. Rushing-wise, DJ has 16 carries for 71 yards and a touchdown. Patty also had 2 for 12 himself. Receiving-wise, Chase has 7 receptions, 166 yards, and a tutty. Um... Who else even had anything? Travis had 3 for 51. DJ had 4 for 50. Jack had 2 for 31. Sean, 2 for 27. Bushman, 1 for 15. And Rashi, 2 for 30. That was one of those games where much was left to be desired, but ultimately we end up walking out with a dub. So it is what it is. I can't stress it too much. Next week, I'm going to catch y'all with a rematch against one of our division rivals in the Chargers. As of right now, I could be wrong. But from looking at the little screen where you see all the team's matchups, are we the last undefeated team left? Okay, no, no, no. There's three undefeated teams left, but we are the last team undefeated in the AFC. So that's a dub. That's a dub. Further I can push this streak, the better we are in, I guess you could call it, the hunt of getting the one seed. I'm going to catch y'all in week five, boys. All right, so I got on this beautiful morning or afternoon, whatever you want to call it, just to see what was here with our Chiefs franchise, and look at this. All right, so for start, I'm going to look at this weekly award. Patrick Mahomes, that's a W, but how the hell do we have a breakout QB, too? But we have a breakout wide receiver, and the only, and I mean the only logical person this could be is Chase. Because last week, Chase Claypool had one hell of a game. So if we did all we need to do to trigger a Chase Claypool breakout, then I promise you, I will throw this man the ball a thousand times this week if I have to. I literally promise you I will throw him the ball a thousand times if I actually have to. Oh, mama, it's time for that man. A hundred rushing slash receiving yards or three plus touchdowns for Chase Claypool. So y'all get the deal. Week five, final week before the bye week, and it is the Chase Claypool breakout week. Oh, we're going in this game on one strategy and one strategy only. That strategy being, throw the goddamn ball to Chase Claypool until he has 150 yards. It's as simple as that. Throw the ball to Chase Claypool until he has 150 yards. Hey, yo, we got us a rain game. Okay, so, um, this Chargers game, I'm playing this game first thing in the morning. Uh, yeah, not really the greatest idea for myself, but, um, it is what it is. Honestly... I remember that Chase has his breakout game, so I'm just going to approach this game with one thing in mind. I'm getting the ball to Chase Claypool. Once Chase has his 150, then I'm satisfied regardless of what happens in this game. Honestly, win or lose. While we are trying to compete for that one seed right now, my biggest priority, honestly, with this team is to get Chase Claypool his superstar breakout because... Mentioned it multiple times this season, I'm pretty sure. He's 27, so this is the last year that he has a chance of even getting that breakout. Not sure even how I triggered it, but I'm happy I triggered it. The touchdown is a touchdown all in the same. That's what I'm looking at this right now for Chase. Oh, that's one. Two more to go. I'm just giving in the middle of the field. If there's one thing that wounds Chase Claypool's stock, it's him dropping the ball and me trying to get the breakout just made me throw in a second. Oh boy. I even I feel like even on that last play, the touchdown, well should have been touchdown. I kind of might have had him open. I just hesitated to throw the ball. When I probably should have. Damn, Legereus Sneed gets burned by whoever that is. There we go. There we go. Never mind. We did get the ball back. Give me the ball back, why don't you? This honestly is probably better for him. There it is. Oh, one more chase. One more chase, that's all I'm worried about. One more. Just 
Trey Colden just got hand delivered a pick six and just didn't want it. That sucks. That sucks. But, I mean, we, we did what we wanted. We held him at three, so we're only down five now. Okay. Okay. Jelani Woods stole that. I don't know who that guy is, but I respect it. He's just going up over top, and he's just beating Isaiah Bolden and Legereus Sneed. So he's got to be higher than 95 speed. He has to be. Honestly, just press. I'm going to just press. Thank you. I'd rather you score. I'd, ra I'd much rather you score, in all honesty. I, I don't care if we lose this game anymore. Uh, trying to go touchdown would make it look like I'm less just keying in on Chase. So, I guess I could do that, too. No fucking way. I'm out here with one goal and one goal only. I've literally said fuck it and literally have thrown this game on Chase Claypool breakout purposes and we got the fucking breakout. Now it no longer matters that we lose this game. Losing this game doesn't even matter anymore. I'm perfectly fine with losing. I don't care. I don't care. I did it to myself. I literally came out and played this game with the sole intent of just getting a breakout and now that I've gotten a breakout, I don't even care that we're about to lose. I don't even care. I'm not even going to count this in my mind as an actual loss because I didn't play an actual football game. It's as simple as that. All right, man. At the end of the game, bro, honestly, I'm not even mad that we lost that because we were playing with um, we were playing with the intent on getting the Chase Claypool breakout regardless. That was... Clay Skywalker has a upgrade already, bro. Clay is literally now four upgrades off of Lurk. So we did unfortunately throw away the potential at a perfect season with basically a big, big breakout on hand. So I do honestly think it kind of is a fair trade off as far as the rest of the league is concerned, or at least AFC to be specific. When you look at the AFC, we're currently still at the top. We technically have tiebreaker over Steelers, so we should still be ahead of them. And I'm not sure what the deal is with Texans, but... We're currently still up there. As of right now, we are leading the division at 4-1, which is an absolute double up. As far as the game is concerned, Patty threw 34 passes. He went 3 for 30. Rushing-wise, Patty had 3 for 29. DJ had 7 for 25. But as far as actually actually passing the ball, we, we break out play. We played for a goddamn breakout. Chase Claypool, 10 receptions, 128 yards, 3 touchdowns. Travis Kelsey, 4 receptions, 84 yards. DJ, 2 for 51. Rashi, 3 for 42. Sean Starks, 2 for 25. Jack, 1 for, 12, 1 for 22. Wide receiver, 1. Chase Claypool is now a superstar dev trade. Hold on, man. I gotta, I gotta take a picture of this. And it's a good day. Win, lose, or draw. I don't give a fuck. Chase Claypool is a superstar. Alright, well, uh, we have a bye week going into week 6, which is kind of a dub. I get a little small or slight chance to just relax for a day or two, potentially. Uh, Stat-wise for the team, real quick, just since this is full season and we can check out a little bit of what's going on. Right now, Patty, 15 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Yeah, beauty. Next week, we kind of went away from the run game this week just in an attempt to get Chase Claypool to break out. So next week, we're going to obviously, or not next week, but the next week we play, which will be against the Titans. We're going to go back to our run game again because DJ is still my guy. But I had to let the guy of the team have his guy moment because he's had now three games where he's gone over one, I mean, two games where he's gone over 150. Season. But Chase Claypool, 30 receptions, 543 yards, 7 touchdowns. Team's looking nice right now. Team's looking nice right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Our offense is looking clean now, though. DJ25, Superstar, Chase Claypool, Superstar, Travis Kelsey, Superstar, Patty. Obviously an X-Factor. Defense still leaves a bit to be desired, but I don't even care that we lost, bro. I'm happy. Let's go. Chase Claypool is now a Superstar. Actual fucking play. Actual fucking play. GG's to you, Chargers. Uh... I'm a fault with you. I'll catch y'all in week seven.
all right hoodie fam so we are in week eight and not week seven just off the fact that uh the person i was supposed to play last week kind of didn't show up and we were the last game and uh if y'all remember from year one that we don't necessarily hold sim for one game so uh yeah we finally get our force win back which is a dub we had a breakout player last week which was another chance for my boy isaiah bolden to get his star dev he didn't get it clearly so we have a chance to play for that this game which would be what one i think it's one interception one sack or one tfl so if we get that we will get our boy isaiah bolden to star dev and we had a tandem breakout again for jack harold i'm honestly not sure at all what this would have been anyway so i genuinely don't necessarily care for this because i'm really not sure if uh if it would even get him like a breakout as far as superstar or anything like that is concerned truthfully that one doesn't necessarily matter for me we got a rivalry game against our boy xander uh once again raiders matchup as usual we're gonna talk trash about him just because i feel like at this point it's kind of principle for us to talk trash about the raiders we always go back and forth 24 7 about our teams chase claypool owns him i just need him to kind of uh understand that because for some reason it's just not resonating with him that uh chase claypool is his father and i just want him to be completely aware of that whole thought process i, I would come out and absolutely throw the ball to chase claypool only but we <laughs> we've done that plenty throughout the last two weeks i'm about to try to get in this game boys and try to hopefully beat the raiders and make the series record for this season four and one Hey, one thing that I'll forever say about the Raiders jerseys is when they came out that season with the Color Rush jerseys, bro, the Raiders have or had one of the sexiest Color Rush jerseys, bro. The all-white on the Raiders with the silver numbers looked, looked so fucking sweet. I don't even know why I said looked like they probably can't still wear it, but the all-white with the silver numbers looked so fucking clean, like so basic but so nice. And with the new NFL rule, bro, can you imagine if they made like not the not the dingy gray that they do have as their normal helmet like if they made like a proper silver helmet a proper silver helmet or if they even gave the raiders a black helmet man i'm getting hyped just thinking about it uh but you know in this world we don't kind of we kind of don't get nice things when it comes to the jersey ideas that we would want to see not chase claypool dropping a pass off rips do not come in this game in the slightest with the intent on losing it and i couldn't throw it I had Jack Harold, I had Chase Claypool, I had so many options right there, but I couldn't get the ball out of my hands. Trust my guys, honestly. I feel like my corners are good enough to hold them from getting these, what, 12 yards that would be necessary for him to go for it. And I know he's not about to run the ball. You learn some tendencies when you play enough people. And oh my god, Justin Reed just flew to the ball. Did I just get an actual jumping animation? I need to buckle down and just run the fucking ball. Like, Let's not act like I don't have the boy DJ25 on the squad. Yeah, I'm gonna just take three. This was another horrible offensive drive by me. I'm, I'm not even mad at the fact that we just got fucked by the fact that I'm playing stupid offensively, but I just have to not come out and play such fucking horrible offense. Just run the damn ball. Why are you not running the ball with one of the best running backs in the league? You can never go wrong with doing something completely dumb, right? Just blitz everything? I oh, don't know. More Josh Jacobs. Okay, doing something dumb did not work. Offense, you just gotta come out and play some fucking football. I genuinely wonder at this point how long is this fucking video already? Because if I'm putting all of it into one single video... Not... I'm... I... I should quit. I should quit, but I'm not going to. <laughs> what the hell did I just watch? And I threw a fucking stupid pass. I just threw a Stevie Wonder right there. Holy shit. Oh, man. I should have went back to Vegas playbook. I'm not using this game for so long. Now we should be able to just run the ball in the DJ, right? We sh emphasis on should because there is no guarantee about anything. I'm running towards Tyree Wilson. I want nothing to do with that man over there absolutely want nothing to do with max crosby uh we'll live with that i guess oh well he threw it back fine by me 
Patty, what the fuck? Oh, you cannot make that shit up. Wide open man, he just misses the fucking pass. Like, Patrick, you have no pressure, no issue. Why are you missing that fucking pass? I'm just gonna put my controller down. <laughs> you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me, bro? Oh, Sean Starks. Good touchdown. You need to stop. <laughs> I shot myself in the foot by throwing those two pick sixes, and we're not gonna talk about his last touchdown. We don't talk about EA's antics, all right? We we leave those alone. You need to stop. Hello? Are, are we- wait, wait, wait a minute, who, who was that? <laughs> oh shit. My internet blew up mid Raiders game, so uh, stat-wise, I mean, I guess stat-wise it kind of benefits us, but at the same time it also kind of sucks because we had a horrible game. Like, a horrible, horrible game. DJ even had a horrible game in the sim as far as receiving wise. Like at least Chase got a touchdown, but other than that, we played tremendously bad. We're gonna get into this game and let's go and try to beat the Texans and at least bounce back a little bit. I'm going back to Vegas playbook because after that last game, yeah, nah. Bears playbook was fun, but I wanna stick with what I had or what I was already using. Hey, wherever this is in the video, man, why are you why have you not gone back and liked the most recent video of NSN? What's, what's wrong with you? I wouldn't be surprised if this video comes out somewhere around the time where storm videos start to drop. Honestly though, like genuinely speaking, I wouldn't be too surprised if I end up dropping my storm generation videos on holy that's a way to start the game. But I'm not sure if uh, they will get dropped on this channel but if they aren't on this channel and they're on another channel because odds are by the time this comes out it'll definitely be after the 17th so you should go down below in the comment not comment section but um in the description potentially in the comment section i might comment with the page itself but go down below in the comment section and check out the channel that i currently have which is titled or named justin otaku or just uh, otaku it's basically as i mentioned prior or before when i was going to use it it was meant for Mugen and, Mugen and anime solely, but now I'm going to just use it as a anime slash light novel basic channel since I'm doing a pro uh, uh, what, what would I call it? A passion project as far as writing a light novel is concerned and that's what that channel channel's use is at this point. So make sure y'all go down below if y'all can or if y'all even have the time to do it. Just at least give that channel a watch. Give it, give it a little, a small little look. Still yet to win a Super Bowl. I'm surprised to this moment that some of the like higher tier teams as far as the AFC is concerned still press him because most people now, at least on the AFC side, don't really press Chase Claypool that much because Chase Claypool just kills people, bro. Like that. Chase Claypool just kills people, bro. Okay, yeah, I took a risk. I rolled the dice. Rolling the dice didn't work. <laughs> I want to be greedy and go for the touchdown, but no, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be safe and just take my three. I want to say that my goal this season, if I didn't already say it earlier, because I'm pretty sure my mind or my thought processes about this whole season is gonna change over the years, or not over the years, but over the weeks, since these weeks are not like a normal single season franchise, I mean single video or single season franchise, whatever you want to call it, because this is spread out over multiple weeks slash like a few weeks technically i think it's probably gonna be like three in total or some shit like that but my thought process is gonna change obviously i do want to make the playoffs once again i do want to win my division oh my biggest thing right now though is i i just want to win the afc championship game and not just fold in i'm gonna run travis kelsey out on the street to try to space out that side of the field for our boy i'm going to who needs to space it out when Travis Kelsey just runs over the top because his user's worried about everybody else? 
We would have, what, like 16 seconds? Maybe less if I bring it out with Isaiah Bolden. I can't be in any better of position. <clears throat> Jack might run open on this. This time, instead of having Travis Kelsey on that streak, I'm gonna not let him on it, just let him run his normal route. Washi. Washi Rice. Get in zone. Yes, sir, slot boy. I'll even be dumb enough that I'll let Trey Colin blitz right here. Just give us one chance. Quay Skywalker heard his coach and said, I got you, brother. You will get four runs from DJ25. And I will stand on that. You will get four of them things. Back to back to back. There we go. That is one of the biggest reasons why I myself am scared to man press. Because there's always the chance that your corner gets toasted. So why even take the risk? Because you really never know when it's going to happen. DJ in the end zone. That's game. DJ in the end zone and that should be game. That right there should be game, baby. What's that? Uh, math is hard. 15 point lead. 15 point lead. It is technically only two possessions with four minutes, so it's not over over. But I think the deal is kind of more or less sealed because he hasn't had a really good passing game all day. As far as the stats for this game, I'm going to just try to get through them in like a brief manner. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously this is full season and next week we have... A wonderful matchup against the Giants. Uh, so we're still second in the division. It is what it is. We look forward to that matchup against the Raiders again in Week 12. Patty, three touchdowns, one interception for 366. Rushing-wise, DJ had 13 carries, 75 yards, two tutties. Uh, I think he only got it around the ball for me. Yeah, maybe it would be. Jack Harrow had four for 92. Chase had two for 78 and a touchdown. Should have been two touchdowns if he dropped one. But it'll be. Rashi, three for 76 and a tutty. Uh, DJ, 3 for 27. Dude, I just I just missed Travis Kelsey. He also had 3 for 78 and a touchdown. Defensively, I don't. Quay Walker had one. That was it. And sack wise, Dre Pryor had one and a half. He might have a breakout game next week. Three TFLs and one and a half sacks. Probably bring him back on the cheap contract. Joshua Williams next season will not be here. Sky Moore won't be here. Seeing that I see not interested, I'm assuming I spoke on most of these guys. Yeah, I'm assuming I spoke on most, if not all of them, since everyone is not interested that I'm not thinking about. So yeah, Travis Kelsey probably comes back on a cheap deal. Um, Justin Reed, I, I don't know, honestly, with Justin Reed. Chanel Records won't be back. Brian Cook, this season is his prove it year, basically, even though I still probably will bring him back. Kyler Gordon might bring him back for depth purposes, and if Carmani doesn't get any better, he probably moves back to safety. And Chris Jones, if he keeps X Factor, we probably get him back. If you have the money to do it, we really have no reason not to, I would say. So, you know, team looking nice. Everybody looking good right now. Chase Claypool is that guy. DJ is that guy. Travis Kelsey is that guy. I just love this team. I really do. I, I just love this team. And I love what our potential is. We have a very high ceiling. We just got to get to it. Catch y'all in week 10. Oh, Chiefs Kingdom, we still riding. All right, man, what's going on, Hoodie Fam? It is week 10, and we have us a uh, ever so prolific Hoodie Tire game on our hands, boys. We are playing against the New York Jets, as y'all can see down below. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just hop straight into this game. No real reason to um, to wait up or anything like that, truthfully speaking. The, the timing as far as this game is not the best for me, but, I mean, it kind of does work out, I guess. I'm not even gonna lie to you, the Giants would be a fun rebuild, low-key. Like, their team's not special or anything like that. They have some really nice view nice jerseys. Who is this Flynn guy? Who the hell is Flynn? B. Flynn? An X-Factor quarterback? Is bro a rookie? Is Saquon hurt? How are you hurt in a league with no injuries? I'm gonna try to keep track of that this entire game. The drop interception count as of right now is currently at 1. That's boxed. Go get him. Thank you. Thank you, Carmani Exchange. At least you hold on to it. But to play it on the safe side, I'm going to go to Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Get upfield, Jack. Come on, Jack. Get upfield, Jackie. Does he do the same thing? I 
Isaiah. Isaiah. I think I like this to the outside though. BJ fight. SMB Marco, when y'all get home. I mean, where that could happen. Now Legeria Sneed acts like he remembers how to play football. So he, he kind of is leaving the door open for one. Now I'm not going to obviously try to force it too much. Because who needs to fucking force it when it's, li it's literally on cue, bro. It's literally on cue. Why would I force it when you give it to me, bro? Hey, Chase Claypool, salute to you, my brother. You can literally hear me talking. You literally hear me. Me and Chase Claypool, the right, we're, we're right there, bro. We are one singular brain cell. One singular brain cell, bro, heard me talking and said, I got you, fam. That was fucking something. I did not expect that at all. What was that? How did they run? How, how was he so open? His safety over the top dropped to the point where Chase Claypool literally had a run. I should have probably just thrown the ball. Oh, I threw it at his user. Oh, not even the user. I threw it at the middle linebacker. He didn't move. Oh, the linebacker didn't move. He sat there. Was he on a spy? Oh, shit. You can't throw brain dead interceptions like that. Ooh, throwing that interception right there kind of threw me off. And I'm not even going to say that uh, my offense is doing any anything less than what it was already doing because it was playing phenomenal. Oh, my God. DJ. DJ is a demon. DJ is a demon. That's the only thing you can say about that. Push, push on three. Ready, break. Tush, push. There we go. Y'all ain't push his tush very much as Patty proceeds to shake his tush. Oh, that's a dot. Because, boy, when I tell you both defenses on the field today have been utter garbage, both defenses on the field have been utter garbage. I'm trusting my gut. Isaiah. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Hello? Oof. Oof, Isaiah Bolden didn't call ball game and now we might have lost. I respect it. <clears throat> what can we cook up here? I need multiple rounds to go at. <laughs> no way the pitch back ends up being we can't run it. Hey, fuck it. I honestly don't care. GG's to the Giants. Yeah, I kind of shot myself in the foot by literally throwing that game away. At some point, I'll learn to be an asshole and chew clock bites. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not that person. And I, I literally can't do it. It's just not me. I'm not gonna lie to you. Had he had 514, two touchdowns, one interception on 21 for a 28 passing attempts. As far as rushing, my boy DJ had 16 carries, 104 yards, and two touches. Had he also had four for 25 and a touchdown. I can't really be mad at nobody else other than myself. I refuse to clock. I refuse to take my points in certain instances. Isaiah Bolden dropped interceptions. I those were situations I can't do shit about. We can bounce back against a currently 1-8 Broncos team. Losing that game would really hurt, but hopefully we bounce back against a 1-8 Broncos team. And if we do win that game, then let's just go into that Week 12 game knowing that we kind of need to be in the business if we want to continue to stay relevant in the conversation of winning our division. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to catch y'all in Week 11. All right, so uh, yeah, pleasant surprise, I guess, but also a random surprise. We uh, apparently have a breakout for our guy, DJ25. At least I could assume. Um, yeah, Demarcus Jackson gets a breakout. I mean, that's cool. Part of me would prefer that the breakout be elsewhere, but all I need is 200 yards on the ground, on the ground slash in the air or four touchdowns. Honestly, the 200 yards is easier, so I mean, why not potentially try for the 200 yards this week got this game against the broncos about to hop into it oh boy wish us luck right now we are um six and three let's try to make that seven and three going into a very important Raiders matchup. like i said man let's come in this game and 
<sighs> Come in this game and just try to secure it up and secure us a DJ25 breakout. Because he's already star, which means an X Factor breakout doesn't in particular do too much for him, I would say. But, I mean, getting him the X Factor breakout at the very least, it gets me the over not the overall, but it gets me an extra ability slot and it gets me an actual X Factor ability. So, it doesn't hurt. And then on top of that, if I'm not mistaken, it gets me a good amount of XP. So, why not try to make DJ25 as good as he possibly could be? Second year running back. Try to continue, not consider, but continue to assert his slight dominance as far as the league is concerned. You know what I'm, saying? I'm taking away Duelich. Take away Duelich, force him to find something else. Is he still in field goal range? Yeah. Alright, bro. He shouldn't have the ball, but hey, that that play was meme worthy. That shit was hilarious. All right, so he has whoever Tommy Landry is over there on the left side. So we just run it complete opposite way. Just run it away from DJ into the end zone. That's one touchdown. I'm really not not too aware of how the hell he has minus or had minus 11 passing yards, but we don't question those things. There we go, Carmani exchange. I don't know how you caught the ball the way that you just did. Like, why did bro turn around and do like a like a spinning type flip mid air in order to be able to catch the ball? I don't feel. I don't think I have the comprehension to be able to answer that question for y'all. But either way, the defense is shot. That's two interceptions in the first quarter. If I can get the four touchdowns and not even have to worry about getting two as far as yardage is concerned, then I'll take that. An X-Factor DJ25 sounds amazing to me. Like, I could put, like, either first one free or wrecking ball on him. That would be nice. First one free or wrecking ball. Or I could even put Truzz on him and then go aggressive. Hey, that's an idea, too. Who knows? It leaves a lot of opportunities open for DJ, though. Oh, fuck it. No point in being too stupid. So, yeah, just do your thing. DJ already has two touchdowns. If we're lucky, two more will come to us in due time. Just be smart. Chase Claypool. And just be smart. Just take my touchdowns. That's a hell of a ball. <laughs> Why? That is the second time now. The second time now that I've literally screwed myself after an interception, bro. I could have got DJ in prime, prime position. Okay, let's just look for DJ yards on this play. Boom. Four run territory, we need two touchdowns, DJ. Come on now. Come on now, hit the hole hard, DJ. One more touchdown. One more touchdown, and DJ25 is literally an X Factor. I mean, well, that's huge. We hold him to three. I mean, I would rather him not score at all, but we hold him to three. That's getting there. All right, come on, defense. One more stop, and I feel really good about our... Okay. All right, play Skywalker. Four touchdowns was so much easier than 200 yards. Oh, that's a wide open DJ, but I'm not going to do it. He already has enough. Okay, that's a dot. Oh, and I missed all the tackles. God, that's a die, and I missed all the tackles, bro. Patty, I honestly thought, not Patty, but Travis Kelsey, I honestly thought he was just going to sit on that. Because if he just sat on that, that is a touchdown by him being absolutely by himself. Then again, though, Jack Harold might be open on this or not. But who cares? You have Shannon Starks. He threw it at us. He literally threw it at us. All right, come on, Jam. Jordan fucking Mason. <laughs> Jordan fucking Mason gets in the end zone.
That was an absolute slaughter fest. That game was over around when it started. So, DJ25, you know why I love football? DJ25 is now a superstar X Factor, and we get 5,000 experience to all of our running backs, albeit we only have two. Overall, our team looked literally surgical, clinical that game, in fact. He had 413 for two, on two touchdowns. 23 attempts, 15 completions. Davis Mills got to throw a ball, so that's cool to see, honestly. Rushing yards, DJ had 13 carries, 59 yards, 4 touchdowns. 4 touchdowns because we had to get the breakout, obviously. And then even my guy Jordan Mason, 4 carries, 43 yards, and 1 touchdown. That's pretty cool for a random dude. We technically had 6 touchdowns. Patty even had 2 for 21 and a touchdown. Receiving-wise, Jack Harrell, 3 for 129. Rashi had 3 for 75, Chase had 1 for 64, Travis had 2 for 54, DJ had 4 for 50, Sean Starks 2 for 35, Bushman 1 for 19. My boy Chanel Records, who won't be on the team next year, man. We're going to miss you, Leo. Leo gets an upgrade. Leo's going to be a very serviceable middle linebacker for somebody next season, assuming they play him. Dre Pryor, potential offense, not offense, but potential defensive rookie of the year. W's, W's, W's. If he somehow finds a way to win it, he probably takes either Carl Loftus or um, either Carl Loftus or on DK Uzoma's spot. But as of right now, we're good. Catch y'all in week 12. That's wraps. Big matchup next week. Big matchup week 13. So wish us luck, boys. All right, hoodie fan. We are uh, we're, we're back in the back, biggity back, all types of back. You know what I'm saying? We are here in week 12 with a very, very big matchup against obviously our divisional rivals in the Las Vegas Raiders. Wish us luck. Eight and three is our goal. We have a tough schedule ahead of us, so every dub we get at this point now is very, very necessary. Every single one. Okay, boys. Big, big matchup. Like humongous matchup on our hands and a great start by Quay Skywalker. I feel like we only need one stop, but then truthfully, I'm also not too positive that. Sheesh. Who is that? Okay, so when it comes to this play, my biggest goal is trying to figure out where Jacorian is, but with Jacorian not having Superstar anymore. It makes it that much harder to actually figure out where bro is, but who cares where Jacorian's at when you can just throw the ball to Sean Starks and his DBs run into each other. You cannot let someone throw such a brain-dead pass and let him get rewarded for it, bro. Like, come on! I trust him. I take it to the left. I trust DJ25. I'm right at max. Oh, that was a risk. That was a risk and a half. And then I put the wheel on the field, even though the wheel is probably not even going to get like that. Look that, look that, the Rashi touch. Beautiful. Beautifully drawn up. Fucking beautifully drawn up. And these are those important games that matter later on in the season when playoff conversations start to happen and you're like, okay, what happened that made us potentially miss this playoff spot? We lost the game we should have won. Not Brian Cook getting burnt by whoever the fuck this Davis guy is. I did not think he was going to sit on that at all. I should have just went to Rashi. Oh, I should have just went to Rashi's drag. And he doesn't throw. I'm, I can't. I fucking can't, bro. You cannot make some of this fucking shit up. Oh man, that game did not, and I mean did not go as planned at all, because holy fuck when I tell you after that, inter after that interception, the tilt was in full effect. We had a horrible game, three touchdowns, five interceptions. I feel like that game we did play good defense, but our offense was, our offense was literally pitiful. Like in the thick of things when it comes to the playoff conversation, like I think we have two games on everybody else, but... Oh boy, we just we still gotta win games. That's it. We gotta win games. Catch y'all in week fuck week thirteen. Oh, that was a rough one. Going now is Mahomes. Oh, his first throw of the game gonna be intercepted. Looked off by Alex. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Touchdown. Throwing is Mahomes. 
yards on third. He's got his target. That's complete. He's got the first down and more. And all the way in for a Kansas City. They'll drop to throw. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. Counted it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. Mahomes going to throw. This is caught. And in for the Chiefs touchdown. Goal unit to see about getting three points. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And this one is right down the middle. Drive. They'll begin the drive. With now a loose football. The ball comes out. It's picked up by the Broncos. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He'll air this one out for Mims. Now into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off by Legereus Sneed. And the Chiefs are going to get the football here at their own 23. On first and 10, here's Mahomes. Oh, the turnover fest continues. Here's another interception. Mahomes looks to throw on third down. It's picked up by the Broncos. This is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter tie. And his kick is good. Not only did he get some yardage back, he got a little bit extra. Really helps him on third down. Makes it manageable back. He's in the space past the 25. And finally wrestled down at the eight-yard line. Here's Mahomes, third and goal. That is caught by Rice. Touchdown. Kansas City. Start this drive in the air. And it's a fumble. A call and locker skill, whatever the case is. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Pick was Mahomes. And they'll find the open man. That's complete. And he's across. Back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. And the Chiefs are going to take possession here as they've got it at their own four-yard line. All right, man, so I know this is all probably in the same video, but uh, yeah. For, or from the the spans of the, let's see, let's see, let's see. From our last matchup against the Raiders, yeah, week 13, 14, and 15, y'all saw the no commentary game for week 15. And week 14 and week 15 ultimately ended up being fair sims. Well, a fair sim and then a forced loss. Was unable to play those games. Very, very uh, unfortunate circumstances, but it is what it is, man. Honestly, we're still nine and five in a very, I would say, strong situation to be able to make the playoffs. But all right, boys, let's, let's get straight into this game. Try to get this out of the way. This is a nice looking jersey matchup between the Bears color rush and the Chiefs color rush. That's actually really nice to look at. Okay, but um. Very serious slash quick question I want to introduce just off the beginning of this episode. If I were to do another Madden franchise after this season, what team would you guys want to see? And would, is there potential that you guys would want to see multiple franchises going on at one time? 
And if so, once again, what teams would you guys like to see? Because I have a few teams that I would like to, I guess you could say, be able to rebuild in on in an online CFM. Other than how I did the actual rebuild video that I did do on my Packers. And a lot of those teams obviously are a lot worse than the fans of this year. I did not end up on I did not really think I was going to end up with a team this good. I mean, at this point, considering how much I feel like we have made this Chiefs team our own, and on top of that, how good this Chiefs team of our own creation has become, I've gotten so many people that have fumbled in the last few games. Bro, if you paid any attention to that last Broncos game, there were so many fumbles that I'm almost tempted to just sit here and play on conservative as a whole just because I'm scared of fumbles now. Crap is actually ridiculous. Like, it genuinely terrifies me now at this point. Good touchdown, Chase. Oh, oh, Isaiah Bolden. Big B. Big B is back in the building, baby. Big B is back in the building, baby. Come on, Big Bolden. Come on, Big Bolden. Did we get this victory, though? This is a big, a very big victory because, as I said in the little pregame, this essentially secures our playoffs, but... Uh, that was a humongous zig route. Now, this is definitely stupid. 100% stupid, but I'm, I'm going to trust my guys to do it. And Sean Starks got it for me when I needed it. And he has no timeouts. So now we force him to put the ball in there. Oh my gosh. Get there. Oh, it rolled all the way back into the end zone into a safety. I want more. We guaranteed our two possession game. But I want more than what we have. I trusted Jack and Jack couldn't get there. Somebody get home. Justin fucking Fields makes a fucking play with his legs. Holy shit. God, Chase Claypool. God, Chase Claypool. Show him how to run a route, my boy. Show him how to run a route, my boy. Show him how to run a route, Chase. Come on, now? Hit Cole, commit harder next time, Nick Bolton. That's all I'm asking. Hit Cole, commit harder next time. Knock dog's helmet off. Uh, that's the one. Snap it at one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was going to say take it to the fourth, but nah. Just snap, just snap that at one. Snap it at one. Give it to BJ25. Like, that's, that's already three minutes off the clock. And my dumbass literally knows exactly what he plans on doing. And instead of running to it, <laughs> instead of running to what I literally know he's about to throw because he just threw it the play before, I just don't run to it. <clears throat> so we're not playing the clock game. Just coming out with some routes. All developing, obviously. And let's try to get an end zone. I got my guy. Ashi Rice, I got my guy! Let's just come out and go bang for bang as far as touchdowns are concerned. Definitely would not recommend it, but I cannot tell you to not run the ball. Who am I to tell you not to run the ball? Especially if running the ball gets you that. Holy. That was a hell of a run. Hell of a run. Should probably go for the first year, but I'm gonna trust my guys. Uh, I think that's game. Should I have probably just scored the touchdown? Probably. Did I care enough to do it? Nah. Yeah, that's game. GG's. But we get a win or a revenge win basically from week one. Or not week one, but year one of Chiefs franchise, WWW. One thing I'll forever not understand is why people press a guy that you literally know is will throw the streak if it even shows his face for two seconds. Overall, though, Patty, 25 attempts, 4 touchdowns, 1 pick, Ws. Rushing-wise, DJ had 16 carries for 104 yards and a tutty. 
Jamie Wembley, 12 for 173 and three touchdowns, bro. Bro cooked us. On the ground, bro actually absolutely cooked us on the ground. I can't even hate. Like, that shit was annoying, but that shit cooked us on the foot on the ground. Chase Claypool, 4 for 169 with two touchdowns. Rashi, 3 for 101. Travis, 2 for 44. DJ, 3 for 37. 3 for 36 for Sean Stark. Shaq Harrell, 2 for 20 or 2 for 34. He kind of disappeared. Hey, overall, very solid game. I didn't even realize DJ had 9 for 28. <clears throat> On the defensive end, I don't think we had. Trey Colin had the strip sack. Interceptions, my boy Big B, Isaiah Bolden. Other than that, not much else went play, took place that game. We did, however, secure ourselves a playoff spot. You have one division leader, two division leaders, three division leader, first wild card spot, uh, second wild card spot, third wild card spot, and then Jesus, the fourth division leader. So as far as the Colts being the third wild card spot at seven and seven, everybody else below them is eight losses or more and with us securing 10 wins we can't go under or we can't even eclipse eight losses we can only go seven at most so i believe we locked in a playoff spot the only person in the afc at this point now that hasn't locked a playoff spot is the colts and the bills yeah colts and bills haven't locked in the playoff spot yet the bills are currently still fighting in their and, and that piss poor division, that's 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 tough. Chiefs Kingdom, that is three years now in the playoffs. Unfortunately though, it looks like we will not be winning the division this season, but sometimes you gotta take everything with a grain of salt, man. At, at least we made it to the playoffs. They, they're giving us a chance. As long as we're in the playoffs, we have a chance to make something happen. So I'll catch y'all in week 17, boys. 10 and five, Chiefs, let's go. Richardson will throw to start out here. That's out to the flat for Akers. Richardson to throw off play action. Throw out right, pulled in by Get to the well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You gotta go up and make the tackle right away. Meyer. So they've gotta be prepared for that. Now Mahomes throwing on second down. This is Chase Clayton. Mahomes now to throw. Mahomes hit, he lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And they'll start with great field position. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. Down inside the 10. Touchdown. Here's Mahomes to throw. They'll get this one to Kelsey. That's complete. Tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. He's got a rifle on deep left side. Mahomes gonna throw. He's got his target. That's complete. They'll go for it. It's Mahomes. And it is caught. Touchdown, Kansas City. Did you know that the defense has played well enough for them to win games and the offense has held them back? Back to throw it. And that is it. 16. To throw, it's Mahomes. And this one. Working from the gun, Mahomes. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Adjustments this offense made in the locker room haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So super now they'll throw with Mahomes. Flush to his right. It's good. Hey, those guys found a way to pick it up. Fake the give. Now Mahomes. And that is incomplete. It down. And that is in. Here's Mahomes to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And that's caught. 
Stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Looking for the corner, and he's got it. Throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Touchdown. Travis count for it as they look to throw. Oh, into a sea of defenders had intercepted. And he will. They're going to look to throw. Mahomes. And he's got it. Touchdown. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. Touchdown. Washington. Terry McLaurin. Mahomes throwing on four. And in for the Chiefs. Again, it's Mills. And look at this. They get the turnover they need. Intercepted. Picked off by Emmanuel Forbes. There he goes left side. And he will bring this one back. And he'll try to throw here. Mills. That is caught by Rice. For a Chiefs. So I know it's been like maybe two to three games or some shit like that since you guys have actually heard commentary mid-game. Um, yeah, by the time this video goes up, y'all have already seen the I'm sorry video. So yeah, you, you heard my voice in that. This is being recorded a few days afterwards. I'm still sick right now. And <clears throat> I honestly think it might only just be getting worse, but I felt like it'd be kind of weird to not have any form of commentary when it comes to a playoff game. So, once again, for the third season in a row, we have a matchup against the Buffalo Bills, which has been a winnable matchup for us over the years. <clears throat> man, it's time for us to get in this game, try to handle business. Sick, tired Chronicles, man. Let's see if we can keep this streak alive. 
With the way things were, the Steelers are the one seed, the Jags are the three seed, the Raiders are the two seed, we are the five, while the Bills are the four, I think the Browns were the six, and the Ravens were the seven. Like I said, man, trying to have a playoff game with no audio just felt like that. Good enough. Get in there, last hoorah old man. Last fucking hoorah for the old man. Touchdown, Travis Kelsey. Oh, for Didn't go, he didn't go RPL. Oh, okay. We'll take that. Nick Bowling. Nick Bowling. Nick Bowling. Alright, we got it back. We got it back. And then this does hurt. And then more, more strain I put on it. I'm pretty sure that person will be. So, first time I check it out. I have way more blocks than that. And touchdown. I'm stuck. Fine. God, Brian Cook, you make a bad play every game, bro. Come on, Sean. Come on, Sean. Come on, Sean. Starks? Keep your foot on the gas, offense. Is that simple? It's third and goal, bro. I don't care to play defense down here anymore. I'm sending everything. It's just third and goal. I will send everything and I will make a read on my own accord. Hey, Chiefs Kingdom, we stood up and it mattered in the playoffs. And now we got us a big end the division round. Alright, man, we're back. Same day as the Bills matchup. And as y'all can see, <coughs> we have our game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh boy, playing the Jaguars, and I, I love those fucking, I love those jerseys. I don't know why the hell I love those jerseys so much. <clears throat> oh no, bro. Off the rip, off rips. As soon as I start talking about loving jerseys, bro, off rips. We get stripped on a kick return, off rip. I'm praying, like, praying so desperately that the punch is not going to be that prevalent this game, but the punch is literally going to kill me. Chasey and Claypool in the end zone. Kansas City Chiefs. Touchdown. Chasey Dreams, kids. Chasey Dreams. In this instance, if I were to give him the ball back without scoring anymore, I don't even know if I deserve to be able to win this. Early or not, like, oh my fuck. And he gets the D-line pick. Even if I threw the ball, there was a very strong chance that that resulted in a fumble because DJ was literally stuck on somebody. Which is far, far worse than us not scoring. Oh my god, I'm going bucks. <clears throat> back to back pick sixes. In the fucking zone. Alright, there we go. Sheesh. And a Says it as he runs the ball for the touchdown. <laughs> he finally fucking ran the ball. That's awesome. I'll take the three. Assuming we can pick this shit. Oh, uh, yeah. Take the three. <clears throat> And SMB just gets toasted. SMB just gets toasted on a crosser. Yeah, that's 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 GG. Honestly, at this point, that's GG's, bro. The fact that I've had so much bullshit go the opposite way this game is literally just incomprehensible, bro. And I throw some stupid shit in. Bro literally went out of bounds. Why is the fucking clock still moving? And I ran with it and changed my fucking mind. Oh yeah, we lose. Let's go at the shit quick.
Going for two here, dude. It doesn't make a difference. Really bad. Oh my god, this shit is too fucking comical. Rashi fucking rice. Behind his fucking user because he overstepped it. <laughs> I fucking god. I can't fucking breathe. I literally can't fucking breathe. Help me. Steel kid, you are a fucking, you are fucking psychotic. You are fucking s steel. Why? He's psychotic. What the fuck just happened? Steel Kid, why would you not kick the field goal? At worst, it was like maybe a 52 yarder? I have zero idea how the fuck we just won that. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm genuinely confused. So, I'm gonna catch y'all in the AFC Championship. Wish us luck. What the fuck just happened? <clears throat> Alright, man. Uh, sick hoodie is still in the building for what could potentially be our last game of the season. <clears throat> Realistically, probably is our last game of the season because we, we don't really have a very good track record when it comes to playing the Steelers. Honestly, shouldn't even be here with how that last game ended with the Jaguars. I mean, it is what it is. This is kind of one of those games that I really just want to go into and just get it over with. I'm going to try my best to be able to give you all the best game that I can give you. Uh, I mean, that's a start. That's a fucking start. I'm thinking we'll get some good blocks here. Oh, what a joke. And my players run into each other. Oh, watch the pick and see. Just take my points, take my points to let my defense come out and play some more defense. That's all I can do. Alright, <clears throat> 41 second, ice in his vein type of drive to win the game. It's not the situation I need to be in right now. 41 second, ice in his vein drive to win game and punch up to the test. Well, that's game. GG's boys. We fucking tried. Trayvon Morag flies up for an interception. Be what it be. We tried it. Once again, a... Like, I don't even know at this point if I consider them letdowns of seasons. But it's also like... What what do I do, man? Because at this rate... <clears throat> if y'all already know, y'all seen from the video, title or whatever it be. This is uh, the entirety of Chiefs Year 3 in a single video. Or... It's probably going to be titled some shit like I played all of Chiefs franchise year three in one video or some shit like that. <clears throat> I do not know what to do. Like, what, what type of moves or trades do y'all really think can be made <clears throat> to improve the team? Because on one foot or one hand, I feel like one of our issues is that sometimes defensively we're lacking, but then other times it's like, we just seem to do so good against other people. <clears throat> I think one of my big, I mean, not one of, I think the biggest issue right now is just that Steelers is just our kryptonite, bro. Like, that's the one matchup that when it matters, we just can't win it. Like, even that last, even this game, we had a chance. This Moreg went up and get it. He went up and got it. You know, first interception was a bad pick. 
if we got that fumble, that strip that we had, maybe it's a different game. Maybe we're in the Super Bowl this week. DJ was contained like shit. He had two touchdowns, but he was contained. Rashi played well. Jack played well. DJ played really amazing. Travis Kelsey did his thing-ish. Chase Claypool was a non-factor. That's never good. Especially, like, it's usually him and Steelers, bro. They make Chase... I mean, him and Raiders. They make Chase Claypool into such a non-factor on the field. It fucking sucks. It fucking sucks sometimes. Uh, but yeah, Super Bowl is him and Falcons. I'm not sure if that's a rematch of last season or what it might be. I, I don't really know. Honestly, actually, I can check. I should be able to check, right? Does this video have it? Oh, uh, no, no. Nope. Okay, I can't check. Oh, well. Oh, man. Last thing we're going to check for this video ends. Did we get any dev ups? They obviously probably won't hold, but at the very least, we can see if we got any. Travis Kelsey, for some reason, is still playing for me. <coughs> Unless offseason he retires. <clears throat> I'm really confused why he is not retired it is what it is takes claypool up to a x factor that's a not sure if he keeps it but with the season that our boy chase claypool had the odds of him losing it are probably a lot lower than the odds of him keeping it realistically other than that i highly doubt i mean highly doubt i got anything on defense D dj obviously stayed where dj is Rashi stayed where Rashi was. Jack stayed where he was. Sean Stark still a star. Nothing else moved on offense and on the defensive end. Oy vey. On the defensive end, at, at the very least, Quay only went down to superstar. At the very least, he only went down to superstar. But Quay Walker went from X Factor to superstar. Honestly, though, Chris Jones still stayed X Factor. That's cool. But honestly, though, with Quay Walker only dropping down to Superstar, it's okay, because that means I can still get Lurker on him. <coughs> That's all I'm really worried about. If he gets back up to Superstar at some point, cool. But my biggest priority with him was making sure that he gets Lurker. So he can still get Lurker, so I'm chilling. As far as the DBs, no one else moved. Isaiah Bolden, God, does bro drop interceptions. Everything else, pretty much the same. I, I'm at such a loss right now at what I can work on slash change with this team in order to try to get over the hump of the Steelers. But, hey, man, if you made it to the end or the end of this video, bro, I really do hope y'all enjoyed Chiefs franchise year three in one video. I believe we're doing two more seasons. So depending on how this video does, y'all will get a Chiefs franchise year four in a full season. And y'all will be getting a Chiefs franchise year five in a full season. Oh man, unfortunately, bro, I'm, I feel like honestly at this point, I'm more, not even upset. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in the fact that once again, now three years in a row, bro, you've gotten to the AFC Championship and we lose. Like at least this season, we didn't absolutely crumble in the AFC Championship, but we still lost, so. Uh... It is what it is, bro. It definitely is what it is. 0-3 in the AFC Championship, but 6-3 in the playoffs. Bye, baby. Your boy Eddie out. Peace. I hope you enjoyed. I will catch you boys in Chiefs franchise year four.